Hey friends, it's Anna here. I hope you guys are having a lovely spring so far. Today, I am very excited to share with you my spring bucket list spread ideas for my bullet journal. We'll be talking springtime books, movies, activities, all the ideas to fully enjoy this beautiful season. And along the way, I'll be sharing with you guys the spring spreads I created for my bullet journal. So grab your journal and some paint if you're creating these spreads with me, or a cup of tea if you're just here to hang out and talk some spring recommendations. This setup is going to consist of four spreads, and this first one is going to be our cover page. I'm starting off by creating a sort of wildflower bouquet that will be sitting in a jar, which I'll paint last. I'm using my gouache paint, this is my Chocola set, which will be linked in the description box below, along with all my other supplies. And to be totally honest with you guys, I have no idea how to use gouache. Before 2023, I pretty exclusively used marker in my bullet journal, but this year I wanted to relearn some painting. I've dabbled in watercolor in the past, and I want to get back into that, but was also interested in experimenting with gouache too. So I just recently got this set a few months ago. It was a gift from my sweet in-laws for Christmas. I have painted with it several times, but have still never looked into any tutorials or information about gouache paint. I do want to eventually go through some tutorials and learn the proper technique, but for right now, I'm just jumping in and doing it, taking Nike's advice. <laughs> All that to say, I am not an expert painter, so if I can do this painting, so can you. I'm painting a variety of flowers, and these aren't necessarily based on any certain real flowers. I just looked at a lot of inspiration paintings on Pinterest and from those picked out the certain flowers that I wanted to recreate for my bouquet. I'm going for a warm pinky orangey color palette for this painting. For all the flowers in the bouquet, I'm using a mix of my crimson red and yellow ochre paints to get the colors. With each new type of flower, I just added either more red or more yellow to change up the color. I think this is one of my favorite things about using paint, is just the unlimited number of colors you can work with. I mean, from these two base colors, I was able to create a whole palette by just changing up the ratios of the paint or also adding some white. Next, I'm using a mix of my deep green, the yellow ochre, and a touch of burnt umber brown to create this warm green for all the leaves. I'm doing mostly a basic leaf shape, but also throwing in a few really long leaves that are almost shaped like a blade of grass. I'm using a lot of water so that the colors are diluted and a little more muted than if they had the full pigment. The whole painting really has a watercolor type style to it, so if you're painting along with watercolor, I think these designs will be very well suited for that. To finish off this bouquet, I'm painting a simple jar to hold all the flowers. I'm using my Prussian blue color mixed with a bit of brown to get this shade, and I'm filling in the inside and bottom of the jar with a lot of random strokes, which I'll blend with a bit of water to give the impression of the reflection of the glass. So while I finish up this painting, I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys more about the inspiration for all the springtime recommendations we're going to talk about in the coming spreads. I originally got the idea to do a spring bucket list from Desi on her YouTube channel, Darling Desi. She has a video titled something like Spring Starter Pack from a few years ago where she shared some spring recommendations. And when I watched that video, I thought, 
wow, it would be so fun to really indulge in spring-themed reading and activities for the next few months. Oh, and here's Coco, <laughs> wanted to stop and smell the roses. Anyways, a lot of the books and movies I will have in my list come from Darling Desi and her video. The overall vibe I'm going for in this bucket list is really cozy, light, focused on the natural world, so lots of flowers and gardens, cottagecore aesthetic, and so on. So all of the books and movies and activities we're going to talk about will be in that realm or vibe. Getting back to the spread, I'm finishing the painting with a lonely wildflower in the bottom left corner. I like how this simple bouquet painting turned out. I think it took me just around 30 minutes to paint and definitely was beginner friendly. For the title, I'm using my black Tombow brush pen. This is color N15 to write spring in a calligraphy font. And I'll add a few more touches to make the word a little more bold. Below this, I'm writing bucket list in a serif font. I'm using the fine tip point of that same Tombow pen to do the outline and the brush tip to fill it in. And here's the final cover spread for our spring bucket list. This next spread is going to be my spring reading list. I'm starting by writing my title at the top in a calligraphy font using my smaller Tombow calligraphy brush pen. Next, I'm going to create a border around the title. I'm going to use this same border around every title in these spreads to make the whole bucket list feel cohesive even though each of the pages will have a different design. I have six books that I want to read this spring, and I decided to draw my list as a stack of books sitting outside on a hill. I had already sketched out the books in pencil, and now I'm going to paint them in. I'll use a larger flat brush for the spines, which will be a variety of muted colors. And after the first book or two, you'll see me switch to using a smaller brush to paint the two lines for the top of each book. On some of the books, you can see the face. So for that, I always use just a slightly brighter shade of the color so you can distinguish between the front cover and the spine. So as I paint these, I'm going to walk you through a little more about the six books I am planning on reading. The first book is The Reason for Flowers, their history, culture, biology, and how they change our lives. It's written by Stephen Buckman, and I stumbled upon it at a local book festival a few weeks ago. The back states it's a volume that will delight gardeners, naturalists, cooks, artists, or anyone else interested in history or culture. I would say I am all of those things, so I'm really excited to learn more about flowers from so many angles, especially since I do want to paint more florals and also learn to name and recognize more flowers. The next book is on the same theme, at least in the title. It's called Flower Heart by Katherine Bakewell. This is a YA novel about a girl who needs to learn how to control her powerful magic, which I believe is related to flowers and plants, in order to break a curse on her father and help save her kingdom. This was one that Darling Desi recommended in her video, and she described it as a mix of Studio Ghibli and Jane Austen, and that really is all I needed to hear to be persuaded to pick up this book. 
This next book I've already started. It's called The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly. It's historical fiction, which is my favorite genre, and also takes place partly during World War II, which is one of my favorite time periods to read about. So this was another book I said yes to pretty quickly. There are actually multiple timelines surrounding five women and the common thread connecting all their stories is a garden. I'm only a few chapters in, but I'm already loving Kelly's writing style and all the garden descriptions so far have been lovely to read, definitely giving springtime vibes along with an interesting plot. The next book on my list is Bird Cottage by Eva Major. I don't have a copy of this one yet because I'm still in line to check it out from the library, but the story centers on main character Lynn Howard, who is actually a real person, who decides to move to the English countryside and devote herself to her passion of studying birds. It's supposed to be a cozy read with beautiful language about nature and, of course, the birds. Part of the description on the back reads, This moving novel imagines the story of this remarkable woman's decision to defy society's expectations and the joy she drew from her extraordinary relationship with the natural world. My next book is actually a book of poetry, The Book of Flowers, which is a short collection of William Wordsworth poems that are about flowers. It's a very small pocket-sized book, but has such a beautiful cover. I can just imagine sticking this in my back pocket and walking over to the little park in our neighborhood and enjoying reading some of these poems under a tree. I am by no means a poetry expert, but I've been wanting to read more, so I think this little book of flower-themed poems will be a perfect start. Last but not least of my spring books, we have The Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden, which has to be one of the most beautiful books I own. The cover, the illustrations inside. This is a published version of Holden's 1906 personal diary, where she recorded her notes, thoughts, and drawings of the nature around her in the English countryside. It has entries spanning from January to December, so you can really see the course that nature takes throughout the seasons. And I think this will be one I come back to in other seasons too, so I can reread the entries from certain months. And those are the six books I have on my spring reading list. I will link all of them in the description box below as well in case you guys want to read along with me this spring. I'm finishing up the books by painting the pages on the side. I did this by painting some thin lines with a muted brown and then I'm going over those with a cream color that I got by mixing my peach, burnt umber, and yellow ochre paints. For all of these spreads, I am painting directly onto my bullet journal pages. It probably would have been better to paint these on separate sheets of paper and then glue those into the journal but I really like being able to paint directly into my journal if I possibly can. This journal does have pretty thick pages. It's 160 GSM. The pages did get a little wrinkled, but since I was being mindful of not using too much water or doing too many layers, it wasn't too bad. But if you do want to get a little more detailed with the painting or have more freedom to use water, I would definitely paint these outside the journal. Lastly, I'm using one of my Stedler fine liner pens to write the titles of my six books on the spines. One thing I wish I would have included was some way to check off these books once I read each one. If I do bucket lists for other seasons in the future, that's definitely something I would add. But for this one, maybe I'll just put a little check by each title to keep track as I go. As I mentioned earlier, my idea for this stack of books was that they were sitting on a hill of grass outside. 
And this hill is actually going to connect us to the next spread on the right page, which will be movies and TV shows. I'm painting the hill by using a darker green for where the books are sitting and using a lighter green on the right page where our film painting will be. The color change creates a sense of depth and kind of makes a foreground and background to the hill. Before painting the rest of the page, I'm going to create my title using the same font and border, and then I'll write out the movies and shows below that. I chose seven movies for my bucket list. The first movie on this list is Finding Neverland, which was a suggestion from Darling Desi. It's a 2004 film with a star-studded cast, including Johnny Depp and Kate Winslet. It tells the story of J.M. Barry and his inspiration for creating Peter Pan. From the trailer, you can tell there's going to be lots of scenes of enjoying the outdoors, playing in the park, and definitely has that message of maintaining childlike wonder even as an adult. Next on the list is the 2020 release of Emma, based on the Jane Austen novel. I cannot believe I have not seen this movie yet. I am still watching the BBC miniseries on repeat, but this spring I am finally going to sit down and enjoy this film. I think it'll be a great spring watch because I can just imagine all the beautiful shots of Emma and Mr. Knightley walking around Hartfield and Highbury. The next movie is The Secret Garden, the classic 1993 adaptation. I have not read this book or seen this movie since I was a very young child, but I know it will be perfect for this season. If you're not familiar with this story, it's about Orphan Mary that is sent to live with her widowed uncle in a at first forbidding mansion. While exploring, she finds a secret garden and really grows in character by caring for the garden and through the relationships she forms with her new family and friends. Next up, we have another classic, in my mind anyways, Tuck Everlasting. I was obsessed with this movie as a child, but I haven't seen it in ages, and I'm excited to watch it again. It's about a young girl who meets a family that is immortal, and although the movie is really focused on heavier themes like mortality, it has a lot of beautiful scenery and takes place largely outside in the countryside. The aesthetic I remember definitely feels like a spring day. The next movie on my list is Where the Crawdads Sing, based on the book by Delia Owens. I read this book with a book club a few years ago when it first came out and still somehow haven't seen the movie. So like Emma, I wanted to finally get to this film. It's about Kaya who grows up alone in the marshes of North Carolina and is eventually accused of murder and put to trial in her small town. Even though this story is a murder mystery, it's also heavily infused with Kaya's relationship with the ecology of the marshes. Growing up alone, the nature, the water, the animals are really like her family. When I was reading the book, I loved all the descriptions of the natural world, and with the movie, I can't wait to see those descriptions come to life on screen. Next up, we have Marie Antoinette, which is a 2006 film starring Kirsten Dunst as the iconic French queen. Like I mentioned, historical fiction is my favorite genre, probably when it comes to both books and movies. This film is supposed to have a very springy aesthetic, showcasing lots of florals, palace gardens, beautiful royal gowns, and of course Marie Antoinette is a fascinating character and I love reading and watching things about her, so I'm looking forward to this one. Last for the movies is Nodding Hill, which is about a romance between an American actress, Julia Roberts, and an English bookshop owner, Hugh Grant. I have this movie on my list, not specifically because of the nature vibes, but because it's a lighthearted rom-com that's been on my list for a while, and I also love stories that feature bookshops or bookseller characters. All right, on to TV shows. There's only two on my list, and they're actually both anime shows. The first is Spy X Family, which has been recommended to me and my husband by multiple people. 
It's about a spy who, for his cover, needs to get a family, so he unwittingly marries a woman who's a skilled assassin and adopts a daughter who is telepathic. You can see how this would make for some entertaining situations. It's supposed to be very heartwarming, hilarious, feel good, and I'm so excited to watch it this spring. Lastly, we have the ancient Magus Bride, Magus Bride, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, which was also a recommendation from Darling Desi. This story surrounds an orphaned girl who is sold to a mage and becomes his apprentice. I believe there is also a romance between them, which is a little sketchy since he bought her, <laughs> but it's supposed to be a very aesthetic show. They live in the English countryside and are studying magic in a beautiful country cottage. So aside from the weird romantic power differentials, <laughs> it seems like the setting is a perfect vibe for spring. And those are all the movies and TV shows I'm planning on watching this season. Getting back to the spread, I did a lot of thinking about how I wanted to do the art because a TV screen just doesn't match the aesthetic of stacks of old books or wildflowers. So what I decided to do was draw a vintage film camera as if it was filming something outside, maybe even the stack of books on this hill. So I looked at a lot of pictures online. This is based on the Bell and Howard video camera of the very early 1900s. And before cameras were made of metal, they were commonly made of wood and leather, which I thought would go very well with this cottagecore vintage vibe. So I used various shades of brown to paint the camera. And here's the final book and film spreads. On to our final spread for this setup. This will be springtime activities. I'm going to use both pages for this spread and I'm starting off by writing the title in my same calligraphy font. I'll also use that same border I used on the previous pages. I decided to represent the six spring activities I wanted to do this season by painting a picture of each as if it's in a Polaroid picture. So below the title, I'm drawing six Polaroid shaped frames, three on each page. They're also going to be slightly overlapping so it doesn't look too perfect. If I could do this all over again, I would also draw them slightly slanted in different ways to make the pictures look even more natural and less formal. So my first painting got cut off a bit, but I'm painting a garden of tulips in this first Polaroid. This spring activity is going to the botanical gardens, which I think will be a perfect spring date with my husband. This next activity is baking edible flower cookies. And no, I don't mean weed cookies. Let's go to Pinterest so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. I've seen this really fun idea where you use edible flowers as decorations on shortbread cookies. Daffodils, pansies, and lilac are a few flowers you can use. So those are the ones I'm painting here. And as with all the activities, I'll write the description in the bottom part of the Polaroid. The next bucket list item is hosting a spring tea party. I'm imagining a group of friends, some good book discussions, plenty of floral teas and cookies to go along with them. For the tea party, I'm painting a white china teacup that has a blue rose and some vines on it. Moving to the top right, I'm painting three pots to represent starting an herb garden, which is definitely something I want to do this spring. We've grown basil and mint in the past, but this year I wanted to have a more comprehensive collection of herbs growing in the backyard. Three of the herbs I'm planning on growing are painted here, parsley, basil, and rosemary. 
and I'm going back and filling in the description for both the tea party and the herb garden. This next activity I'm labeling as read one of my spring books outside in the park. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to do this with the Wordsworth Book of Flower poems. There's something so refreshing about reading outside, but I don't do it very often. My painting for this activity is a tree, and underneath I'm adding a mini depiction of myself in a blue dress reading a tiny little book. And finally, the last spring activity I wanted to put on my list was create some pressed flower bookmarks. I'm always in need of more bookmarks, and making some out of pressed flowers is a fun and easy way to create some beautiful bookmarks that I think will be perfect for my spring-themed books this season. I'm adding a cream color to the outside of the Polaroid frames to make them look a little older and give the page a little more color. And here is the final activity spread and last pages of my spring bucket list. Let's do a final flip through. Thank you guys so much for watching or painting along with me. I hope you enjoyed these paintings and let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the spring recommendations we talked about. If you liked this video, I'd be so grateful for a thumbs up and please feel free to subscribe for more bullet journal content. Thank you again for being here and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.